we of course applied boundary conditions to uh, the uh, determine the behavior of a transmission line that's terminated in some passive load. And that was fairly simple to go through and apply boundary conditions there at the end of our line where our load, passive load, was attached. Um, simply uh, applying KVL and KCL uh, to the uh, load current and uh, load voltage. And then Ohm's law allowed us to determine ultimately our um, boundary condition that their line impedance at the end of the line must be equal to the load impedance or the reflection coefficient at the end of the line must be equal to the uh, load reflection coefficient. <clears throat> so that was fairly simple and straightforward, but applying boundary conditions to solve problems for transmission lines are a very important um, um, a concept and uh, there are many cases where those boundary conditions are more complex than simply that <clears throat> that is presented to us from a simple passive load connected to the line. Uh, certainly the source that we did in the previous um, unit, uh, uh, the uh, Thevenin source, um, uh, we are able to solve boundary conditions and find then relationships between uh, V0 plus and V0 minus. But we also want to do it some more uh, difficult um, sources and, and more difficult um, uh, circuits. And so again, that's a, a skill that we want to be able to uh, make sure that we uh, understand and, and are um, uh, adept at uh, uh, applying boundary conditions in order to solve and analyze um, uh, transmission line problems. So let's look at this uh, example. In this case, we have a transmission line. At the beginning of the transmission line, we have a current source in parallel with a um, uh, source resistance of 25 ohms. So this is basically a Norton source. The index has Z increasing as we move down the line <clears throat> away from the source, and we have denoted the index at the location of the source as Z equal to zero. And that's generally not what the value is. It's a value of minus L, but again, it's up to us to decide how to do the index. In this case, we've decided to call the location at the beginning of the line the value Z equal to zero. Now, notice we haven't said anything about what's attached to the other end of the line. Um, and of course, until we do, there's really no way you could solve the problem, unless, of course, we give some other in piece information. And this uh, problem uh, have given you the form of the total current, almost exactly the form of the total current, with the exception of some complex value B that is unknown. And so this is a bit of an academic problem. Um, you know, we uh, don't know what's attached to the in the line, but somehow we do know what the total current is, or at least the general form of the current. And um, our goal here is to try to determine what is the value of this complex value B. To do this, we're going to have to go through and apply boundary conditions. And then once we have our boundary conditions, we can solve then for this unknown value. We know, of course, uh, the solution to the telegrapher equations with respect to the total current. It has uh, a plus wave current, the current manifested by the plus wave, propagating plus wave, uh, subtracted from that the current manifested by the propagating minus wave, the plus wave current minus the minus wave current. And this is from KCL. This is how I define, uh, of course, the current. It's uh, defined differently in terms of whether there's a minus sign or a plus sign. Um, it's arbitrary. Again, that really only affects the definition of <clears throat> or the value of I0 minus, but this is how I like to, uh, to write it. <clears throat> We're given in the problem statement here that the total current is equal to this, and we can equate terms. We have e to the minus j beta z term here. We have e to the minus j beta z term on the other side, and the only way that these two equations can be equal is if the coefficient of that e to the minus j beta term uh, on either side are equal to each other. So in other words, from uh, by inspection, we can uh, directly write that the um, complex wave amplitude for the uh, current, uh, I0 plus, is equal to 0.4. Likewise, when we inspect the two, um, uh, the, the, what was known to be the solution for uh, uh, the current along a transmission line to compare it to what's provided in the problem statement, we see a uh, <clears throat> term which has e to the plus j beta z on either side. And the only way that um, the equation can be equal for all values of z is if the coefficient of each of these terms are 
exactly equal to each other. And so by, again, inspection, we see that the value of i0 minus must be equal to this unknown value b. From the value of i0, uh, I0 plus and i0 minus, we can determine the corresponding uh, complex wave amplitude in terms of voltage, V0 plus and V0 minus. And we do this by simply multiplying the two complex current wave amplitudes by the characteristic impedance Z0. And so this, again, is using my definition. So I like using this definition. There are no minus signs relating V0 minus, for example, to I0 minus. So we take our known values of each and we multiply by 50, and that determines the value of our um, complex wave amplitudes, V0 plus and V0 minus. V0 plus is 20. V0 minus is equal to 50 times this unknown complex value, B. The total voltage along a transmission line is always given in this form, and so now that we know V0 plus and we know V0 minus, we can insert that in there, and we find this is the form of the total voltage along the transmission line. Again, we know everything here except for the value of B. So now we can apply our boundary conditions. Uh, let's look first at this current. Uh, the current, when evaluated here at the beginning of the transmission line, and again, we need to take our function of position z and evaluate it specifically at this location, location to determine the value of the i at this location. The value of the total current at different locations along the transmission line will have different, um, different values. It is a function of position as we move along z. We don't care what the value of the total current is here or here or here. What we care about is the value of the current right here at the beginning of the line at z is equal to zero. So we insert zero into in the index z into our current equation, and that will determine the current here at the beginning. Now, what is that current equal to? Oftentimes, students will tell me it's equal to this, that the current comes out and comes in here. The problem, of course, is some of the current goes through this shunt resistor. This one amp of current will come through and divide into two pieces, one IR and one then the current that enters the beginning of the transmission line and by boundary condition <clears throat> equal to this value. And so this value must be the difference between one and this current IR. And so this is our first boundary condition equation. For the voltage, it's simpler. The voltage across this resistor, we'll call it VR, <clears throat> must be equal to the voltage at the beginning of this transmission line. By KVL, we see that that is true. Once again, we're not saying VR is equal to the total voltage. The voltage is a function of position. That would make no sense. What we're saying is VR at this point is equal to the voltage here at the beginning of the line, the total voltage when evaluated at this location, Z is equal to zero. So here are two boundary conditions. So we have an expression then for uh, current, uh, VR, it's the voltage at the beginning of the line. We have an expression for the current IR, which is the difference between this one amp source and the current that enters the beginning of the line. And of course, those voltages, that voltage and current, VR and IR, is then related by a device equation that we call Ohm's Law. So this is the last piece of the algebraic puzzle that we put in here. We had KCL and we had K, I'm sorry, KCL, we had KVL, and now we relate the two, the voltage and the current, with the device equation uh, called Ohm's Law. So uh, we can use this expression and rewrite it in this form, and this gives us a relationship between the total voltage at Z is equal to zero and the total current at Z is equal to zero. Well, the total current at Z is equal to zero we know from telegrapher equations. We go through and evaluate the total current uh, expression. Remember, we had this uh, coefficient of 0.4 and this of, uh, or this uh, value of 0.4 and this uh, the wave amplitude of 0.4 and this one of, of B. And so we evaluated Z is equal to zero. In this case, it doesn't matter that we don't know the value of beta since we're multiplying by zero. And we get this as the total current at the beginning of the transmission line. Likewise, from the telegrapher equations, we can evaluate the voltage at the beginning of the line and Z is equal to zero. This is our telegrapher equation solution where we have V zero plus and V zero minus. <clears throat> 
and uh, we evaluate at z is equal to zero, and we get this uh, result. So we can take these two expressions and insert back into this. As shown here, we take this equation, insert the value of the total voltage at z is equal to zero here, and the total uh, the value of the total current at the beginning of the line, z is equal to zero here. And what we end up with is one equation with one unknown, and that unknown is b. And so we can solve this uh, equation algebraically for the value of b. I'll let you do the details there. And what we find is b is equal to minus 0.2. This is a complex number, so it's minus 0.2 plus j0. Or we could write it as a uh, value of 0.2 times e to the j pi, uh, a magnitude of 0.2 in a phase then of pi radians <coughs> uh, for, the, uh, for the answer. So what is the point of this example? One thing I want to uh, uh, try to convince you of is that in microwave engineering and really in all aspects of electrical engineering, you don't want to go through and simply write down a list of equations, the right of equations. I have a recipe for the solution given some particular problem. If I identify the problem being the same as a previous solved problem, I can then map the uh, solution for that problem into the one I now am faced with and uh, by plugging in the numbers get the right answer. Uh, this is a problem where um, they get this different than what we have uh, uh, looked at before and so we couldn't go back and simply look at what the result was. We couldn't find the right equation. We couldn't get a recipe. What we did do was apply uh, our rich fundamental knowledge of electrical engineering. We applied the solution to the telegrapher equations. We applied um, KCL. We applied uh, KVL. We applied Ohm's law. We applied all of our knowledge of electrical engineering to get to the right answer. And that's um, uh, what we're going to have to do over and over again in this class is use the facts you know to solve a circuit that you've never seen before, a problem that you have not seen before. And so when you see one, don't go looking for some other similar problem uh, so you can mimic um, the solution to the end. <clears throat> Trust in the knowledge you have in electrical engineering. Again, the fundamental knowledge of devices, transmission lines, sources, uh, impedances, and so forth, and the relationship between currents, KCL, the relationship between voltage, KVL, and the device equations, and it will always lead you to the correct answer.